You're welcome. Let's get into the details of those stories. Now, the Commission of Enquiry into the violence during the Ayawaso West Wagon by election has rejected an application to have some witnesses cross examined. Rejecting the application, Chair of the Commission, Emil, Justice Emil Schultz, said granting it would set a quote, dangerous precedent in the work of the Commission's uh, of the Commission of Enquiry. Dominic Ayene, who represents NDC parliamentary candidate Delali K. Brimpong and the Ningo Pram Pram MP Sam Jata George filed his application to cross-examine other witnesses whose testimonies touched on his client. We'll bring you the sound by shortly, but first, hear the Member of Parliament for Ningo Pram Pram on how he kept the shell cases collected from the crime scene. Did you state in your statement that um, someone had given you shell casings uh, on the day of the incident, you know, on the day of the shooting? My Lord, in my statement, that is not in there. Didn't you think it was important to state in, in your statement that you had been given shell casings? My Lord, if you read my statement, you realize that from the, the, the point where, and that's I think in the last three lines of my statement, where I narrated what transpired after I exited the building, I didn't give a lot of detail in there. I just stated that from the building, I went to Mr. Brimpo. I'm sure you are aware that uh, these shell casings are critical evidence in the investigation of what took place on the day in question. Any time consider it prudent to give, to hand over these shell casings to the police or to even put it in your statement? My Lord, the issue of the shell casings was even mentioned on the day in the press conference that was called by my national chairman and national executives. So the fact about shell casings from the scene was already public knowledge, my Lord. No, you haven't answered my question. I said, did you not consider it prudent either to state in your statement that someone had given you shell casings uh, on the very day that the shooting take, took place? My Lord, yesterday I stated before this commission how standing aloof when I was being assaulted, even though there were armed policemen who could have intervened, they didn't. I have exhibited my trust in this commission by bringing such critical evidence before this commission because I believe it would help the work of this commission. So your distrust or mistrust of the police stems from the fact that they did not intervene when you have... Lodge a formal complaint. They refused to take my statement. The ...who told you you should leave your telephone number and take your statement. came there as a victim of an assault. Went to the police to give a statement. The police declined to take my statement at the time that I went there. They indicated that they would get in touch subsequently, which they failed in the police station, my lord. It's over a month. Did you not say that yesterday that you got a call two days later after you? Let's not confuse the issues, my lord, respectfully. I stated that I received a call from Superintendent Afo, yes. who said he was investigating a different case. I went to lodge my personal case at Legon Police Station. They refused to take my statement. On the day of the incident, the national executives, led by the national chairman of the NDC, went and lodged a complaint with the IGP. The IGP commissioned a separate investigation 
it is to aid that investigation that superintendent a full of national CID because the IGP's case had been handed over to the national CID to investigate. This statement I gave was to aid that investigation. My case, which I went to lodge as a citizen who had been assaulted, up till now, a statement has not been taken, my lord. So that is a member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram there explaining why he did not or he chose not to uh, tender in uh, the shell casings that were given to him. He earlier told, uh, explained that after the shooting spree in front of the residence of the NDC candidate during that by election, he asked some men around to pick the shell casings and surrender those to them but he did not hand them over to the police because he did not trust the police, as he's indicating there. One of the interesting parts of the sitting today had been uh, uh, how he ended up walking with a gentleman he describes as one double, who he said asked him to follow him to get some keys. He had told the members, uh, the, the members of the commission earlier that there was an altercation between two groups involving the armed men and unarmed civilians, and it was over a key. He explained further that he was told by this gentleman he calls Bullet to follow him to retrieve that key, which he believed would end the altercation between the two groups before it escalated. Listen to the MP again. Somebody has seized a key. My Lord, that was one of the comments. Sincere apologies for that anomaly there, but let's go over to the grounds where it actually happened. The Christian broadcast, so our correspondent Joseph Akable joins us so we can have a TikTok about this a bit more. Joseph, thanks for uh, this afternoon. How are you? Thank you, sir. Very well. So, Joseph, one of the key highlights today is the fact that the request by counsel for um, the Member of Parliament to cross-examine some other witnesses has been declined. Give us the specifics of these witnesses that the council wanted to cross-examine. Uh, in fact, we don't know their specific names. But okay. We get a sense of these witnesses because uh, they describe the witnesses as individuals who had made comments that affected uh, the personality of the NBC parliamentary candidate directly. Mm. And we know that so far the National Security Minister had all talked about him in terms of the suspicion that uh, some weapons were being stockpiled in the residence. Uh, but the point being made was that all witnesses that had made reference to the NDC parliamentary candidate, witnesses that they would want to call upon uh, to re-examine. Uh, so they had made the argument that uh, uh, we understand that they were actually supposed to make a similar motion today, uh, right after uh, Mr. Jones had ended his testimony. Dr. Uh, Dominic Ayene was just about uh, raising the same motion. That was when Justice Short came in to say that uh, they are ready with their ruling. And in his opinion, he says that the commission is engaged in a public enterprise of finding the truth and that if they proceed to grant the request, they will move from that objective to now become a commission engaged in the protection of private interests and private rights against other private rights. Mm. Since all other witnesses will also be equally interested in uh, cross-examining other witnesses that have also testified. And he makes mm. the point that in terms of the reference, the terms of reference that was handed the commission, uh, the individuals involved, that is Sam George and uh, the Lali Brempon, the NDC parliamentary candidate in a by-election, the two individuals are not directly named in the terms of reference of the commission. They are, they are to look into uh, issues leading to the violence and that the individuals are not named directly. So in the opinion of the commission, they don't see why they should be allowed uh, to cross-examine other witnesses that have come uh, before it. In Dr. Ayane's opinion, right after the ruling was uh, delivered, he told the commission that it is the understanding by the ruling that uh, it means the commission will not be making any adverse findings in relation to uh, the two individuals involved, and that satisfied them for now. Mm. Interesting. I I'm wondering whether or not you had the chance to engage uh, uh, Mr. Ayane after this, you know, uh, ruling was delivered, and uh, indeed after the entire sitting came to an end today. Uh, we couldn't, uh, but from the indication from the actions made uh, in the uh, auditorium, the conference room where uh, the proceedings are ongoing, uh, it appears they are satisfied with what they uh, pushed for and what they obtained in terms of the ruling that came from the commission. Okay. Well, we're just about playing part of the highlights where uh, uh, Professor Mensa Bonzo engaged a member of parliament on one of the, uh, on what the member of parliament says was 
key to ending the altercation or was important to ending what looked like uh, a, a situation that was going to escalate, the key, the missing key. Um, give us a wrap of how that back and forth between Professor Mensah Bonsu and um, the Member of Parliament went because we're, we were unable to play that video to our, our, our viewers. Uh, so Mr. George recounts that when he arrived at uh, the polling station, uh, he saw uh, the National Security Operatives rush uh, behind a building. And when he headed there, he realized that uh, there was some scaffold between a number of uh, residents in the neighborhood and the operatives. Uh, so he attempted to understand what was causing it, and he realized that the residents were complaining about the key that was in the possession of the operatives, and that he was trying to retrieve the key for them. And he followed uh, this operative whom he named as Double away from the building in an attempt to get the key from him. But when they moved away, they couldn't obtain the key. Uh, when it was time for the commissioners to engage Mr. George, uh, Professor Enrita Mensa Bonsu, who is a commissioner, engaged Mr. George on what exactly that key was for. Uh, the first question she asked had to do with uh, whether he knew who owned the key in the first place, uh, what that key was to open, and what and why that key was important to resolve in the disagreement. Uh, but Mr. George uh, insisted that when he arrived at the location, he only heard from people that their key had been taken. He couldn't. He didn't ask about um, what the key was for because he says he had no training in crowd control. But looking at the situation, he realized that the key was important to resolving the dispute, and therefore he decided to follow through to ensure that he retrieves the key from them. And mm -hmm. the concern from Professor Mitchell was again, who owns the key or who he would have returned the key to? But Mr. George responded that uh, if he had been successful at obtaining the key, all he would have done was to return to at uh, the point where uh, the residents were agitating and will ask them directly uh, who owns the key, and he would have been able to identify that individual to return the key to. So that was the banter between the commissioner and uh, Mr. George about that key that he had wanted to retrieve. Okay. Well, we'll have a short in the, uh, conversation with the security analyst to find out how uh, the handling of the short cases and the fact that it was kept by the MP will, will, will affect the ongoing investigation. But quickly, before we let you go, uh, Joseph, the DSP Abna Benewa, uh, who is a Legon District Crime Officer, was also there. And uh, we understand that she's also been talking about receiving some shell casings as well, two of them. Yes, these are actually shell casings that uh, she interestingly retrieved from some two children whom she later identified as them per her engagements with them as being students of the Baolishi La school. Mm. Uh, this school, you recall, is some few meters away from the polling station where the election took place. Uh, now, she says when her men, uh, together with her men, arrived at the scene, they saw the two children a few meters away from the school and the polling station. The children were holding the casings. And the concern from the commission was to the effect that it meant that uh, the crime scene had been tampered with uh, to the extent that the cases had even been moved. And the former IGP, Patrick Achampon, uh, upon interrogating uh, the police officer, arrived at the conclusion that it could not have been a case that it was uh, as a result of the firing that led the, that caused the empty cells to be moved that extent just at a distance from uh, the police station. But rather, it appeared that. Uh, they have been picked up by these children and they are taking them away. And the concern again was that she had failed to hand them over uh, to the CID unit that had been tasked by the IGP to investigate. But her response was that there was another individual that she identified as a youth chief uh, in Accra, and that individual had other cases numbering more than 20. Mm. Uh, she said she had wanted to lay hands on the other empty shells and put them all together before she submitted, she submitted them for the forensic analysis. Right. And she has been unsuccessful at retrieving them, but she has identified a set individual and she's still uh, pursuing the matter to ensure that she obtains all those empty gun shells and hands them over together with the two that she's keeping to ensure that um, the analysis is done to enable the police team know uh, which weapon fired those uh, gun shells and whether they are owned by either the police or the National Security Operations Committee. Very well. Uh, before I let you go, finally, uh, Joseph, when is the, is the uh, um, commission sitting again? It's not sitting tomorrow. And who is coming? Uh, we understand it will resume on Thursday. Uh, there are still a number of individuals that are supposed to appear before the commission that are here to take their turn. In fact, uh, today the list that were handed by uh, the clerk to the commission, it included DSP Samuel Azubu, who had already testified. 
uh, but he did not come here without had any official explanation as to why uh, he didn't come up. Because we know that there are some uh, other documents that he was supposed to send up before the commission that, uh, for which reason his name was placed on it. There is also Lydia Seriam al Hassan, who is the MP for Ayawasu West Wagon. Uh, she won that election that turned violent, for which reason the commission is undertaking this particular proceeding. Uh, so she is also another individual that we are expecting uh, to appear before the commission, either on Thursday or in the subsequent days when they hold the IM. So that is the information we have for now. Joseph Akable, thank you very much. Uh, Joseph Akable there, he is our man monitoring the work of the commission, the commission of inquiry led by Justice Emil Short. Well, I'm taking you to Niger, uh, Liberia right now because I have a security analyst there who's joining me via the phone. Prosper Addo is the man. Mr. Mr. Addo, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. I believe that you've been following this uh, conversation that's going on here. Now, what's emerging this afternoon is that the member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram had shell casings, about 20. It actually emerged yesterday. But what is emerging today is that he did not indicate to the police when he wrote his statement that he had the shell, uh, the, the shell casings uh, that he had gathered from the crime scene. Um, first of all, let me find out from you, how key is this development to the investigations ongoing? The fact that he had the shell casings and did not tender them in as evidence earlier. Uh, okay, thank you so much for having me. Um, I, I, of course, I'm not a lawyer, so I wouldn't be making um, uh, pronouncements which may be correct, but I would imagine that there are certain questions were asked, and uh, in terms of questions, I don't know if any, anything of the sort was required or requested from him, and he did not send that in. Or if he was asked to send out all the uh, whatever he had, in terms of evidence, and then either he forgot or, you know, it was an oversight, I cannot say. But he said he did not trust the police. Uh, he did so, not trust the police with that but, piece of evidence. Okay, but I think that whatever it is that he has in his possession, it's very important to the investigation currently ongoing, mm -hmm. because then if shells are in the possession of somebody, uh, the person must be able to explain where were got him from, mm. particularly when they were, if they are empty shells, we fire this yeah. and all that. So I think this is a very important, okay. you know, uh, exhibit that might tend. Okay. Now let's get a bit more into the details. We know that every crime scene has to be preserved. As we speak now, we know that this was a very chaotic situation. The MP says today to the commission, Men went around to pick up these shell casings that they found on they found on the floor, put them in the polythene bag, and handed it over to him. He has been keeping it since the 31st of January when this happened, and has brought it today. Contamination of evidence. Walk us through it based on this scenario. Uh, well, that's interesting, but I think that um, perhaps as the proceedings are ongoing there may be certain things that could have happened, didn't happen, but would have to happen. And what I mean by that is that if at the first instance, when he presented himself for interrogation or questioning, uh, but then uh, he did not send that as in, but somehow it came to light. I'm not too sure if it is too late to send that as in. And I'm sure uh, the commissioners will then go ahead and guide in terms of questioning as to how these shells, you know, came about and for what purpose it was gathered. But I'm actually referring to how the fact that these shelling, uh, shell casings have been removed from the crime scene, first of all, is been touched by so many people, handled by so many people, and trying to find out the linkages. I mean, how can that affect any forensic work that will be done to ascertain, for example, where or who, who, which gun, from which gun yeah, those, th those bullets mean. were fired? I think, I, I think like you initially said, it was a bit of a chaotic situation. Mm. Now, I wouldn't know why it was guarded, but I would imagine that it may be two things. Either that those gathering the shells did not know that they were tampering with evidence, and it was done out of ignorance, or 
they were also doing it to hold it as evidence against whoever was firing. Mm. But again, once you touch these things, your finger, your finger print goes on it and all that, and you could equally be implicated. And so perhaps I would liken it to ignorance or not understanding particularly the uh, regulations or mm. the, you know, rules that how, guide how to behave crime on, crime, on, crime, on crime scenes. Exactly. Yeah. But, but then again, Absolutely. how will the fact that it's been touched by so many people affect the, I mean, ordinarily, and I don't know what, uh, how, how it's done, but ordinarily, will there be a way of still being able to get the purity of this um, um, oh, yes. evidence? I, I think, I, I, and, and, and what the question you are asking then comes down to the whole, um, the handling, the small mm -hmm. arms that was used. You know, those weapons are supposed to be marked, they are supposed to be labeled, they are supposed to be registered, and each shell that is fired from a gun uh would have some kind of a label in this case i don't know what um were used who provided it if it was registered and all that but those things can be traced and then uh, the source of the gun is registered can also be traced mm -hmm. and to whom it was fired. so as long as those weapons used were registered and clearly labeled it should be easy to trace who had it and who fired a shot so, so there is a way. There is a way to find out. There is, there, a, way. There is a way to find yeah, out. So it's not like all hope is lost as far as investigating and finding uh, the truth is concerned. Not at all. Not at all. Interesting. Well, thank you very much, sir, for your time this afternoon. Prosper Ado is a security analyst there joining us all the way from Liberia. I'm going to take you back to the commission earlier when they interrogated or when they had the member of parliament for Ningo come before them. Now you know that here at Joe News we've launched the campaign, uh, the hashtag disband party malicious now and it's supposed to put pressure on the politicians who we know fund these uh, group of people who in, uh, on, 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 on a number of occasions have visited crime uh, on, on the state to call them to order and to disband those groups. Well, today, when the Member of Parliament appeared before the Commission, there were questions regarding what ought to be done. In fact, there were questions about whether or not he could identify a couple of people who the Commission told him were members of the Hawks, a group affiliated to the NDC or to individuals within the NDC, as they now say. Let's hear Sam George also committing to disbanding such party militia groups. I'd like you to um, have a look at this, these two pictures. Do you recognize uh, the person who is described as being the alleged leader of the Hawks? My Lord, I know his, this image from social media. I have seen pictures of him, but I do not know him in person such that I could tell you this is his name, or this is who he is. I have seen his image. Some of these images are well circulated on social media. Um, you have seen his image as who? I have seen him in pictures, political pictures, but I do not know who he is. The way if someone showed me, respectfully, my lord, your picture, I could say, oh, this is Justice Emil Short. I am in no position to say this is who he is, but I do know the face. Yes, my lord. Was he at the scene of the incident on the 31st of January? My lord, I do not remember encountering him at the incident at any stage and point in time. Because like I've stated before the commission, my engagement was mostly with the NSC wearing units at the entrance with the election officers and then at Mr. Brimpong's house, mostly with double and some of the members of the crowd. But I don't remember engaging this gentleman at any point in time, my lord. All right, let's let's have the pictures back. Do you know any members of the Hawks? My Lord, when you ask me, do I know any members of the Hawk personally, or do I, can I 
make them out. I would like to be clear what exactly you're asking me. Have you seen any members alleged to be members of the Hulk? My Lord, certainly there have been several pictures of men wearing T-shirts with the Hawks on them. So yes, I have seen pictures of people wearing T-shirts that have the Hawks on them. Did you see them at the um, near Mr. Delali's house on the 31st of January? Did you see any of them on that day? My Lord, as far as my memory serves me, I did not see anybody wearing a T-shirt no, 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 with the Hawks. Not wearing a T-shirt with the inscription, the Hawks. But somebody who you may have seen before. Fortunately, my Lord, no. I don't remember seeing any of them. What about, did you see any member of the Azoka boys? My Lord, at unlike... The house on the 31st of January? My Lord, unlike the Hawks who you would say have had a lot of pictures of them with the T-shirts that make it easy for you to say, this person, I have seen him wearing a Hawks T-shirt. I haven't seen pictures that identify people as Azoka boys. So it will be impossible for me to state here as a fact that some of the people I saw there were Azoka boys or not because I have not previously seen any picture identifying them as Azoka boys, my lord. They were trying to push them back. They appeared to me to be. That, that was what I encountered there. And the crowd was resisting. Yes, my lord. You there was a resistance. minor scuffles. Yes, there was a resistance. Yes, my lord. So the number of people were fighting. I mean, with the pushing and shoving, you see somebody throw their hand and then someone throws their hand again. That was ongoing, my lord. Is this the usual behavior of crowds in this country when they see armed and uniformed people? My Lord, I'm no expert in crowd control. I have no opinion on that, respectfully. They seem a very strange crowd to me because most Ghanaians take to their heels when they see uniformed people, especially if they are armed. So it's a strange crowd to me that they were actually fighting off these people. My Lord, I, like I've stated, I do not have expertise in crowd management. And again, I'm sure that if I saw a crowd of people dressed like the gentleman here in police uniform, it would send, uh, that's a uniform I know, and it, it, there's a respect for that uniform. Uh, but I mean, to see people in balaclavas and masks and t-shirts, Various other things. I am no expert in crowd control. I have no opinion on but that. But you sought to control the crowd. Madam, like I stated this morning, I know what electoral violence can do having grown up in Nigeria. This is the only country I call home. Anywhere I see violence, I try to de-escalate. Electoral violence can get very, very costly in terms of human life. I only sought to intervene and de-escalate like I had done earlier in the morning with my mere first case. That's the Member of Parliament for Ningo Pram Pram, Samuel Jata George, there earlier today at the Commission of Enquiry. Well, the Commission continues work on Thursday, and you do know that there's a list of people expected to appear, including, we understand, DSP Azugu again, and the Member of Parliament for that area now, who is in the person of Lydia Seram Alhassan.